In this tutorial, we're going to cover loops in Java. So to get started, let's close our conditionals.java file, right-click the default package, select new class, and we'll call this class loops. And as usual, let's create our main method by typing main, pressing control spacebar, and hitting enter. So let's say we want to do something like print the numbers 1 through 10 to the console. How would we do that using what we've covered so far? Well, you're probably thinking we could do a whole bunch of system out print lines. The first one saying 1, and then we could just copy paste that for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then go ahead and edit all the numbers. So we'd have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And now we went ahead and ran that. We will see that 1 through 10 has been printed to the console. Now you can see that this wasn't all that difficult, but it is kind of tedious. And you can imagine how much more tedious it would be if you had to print 50 things to the console, or 100 things, or 1,000 things. So what we really need is some way to execute the same code over and over. And that's exactly the functionality that loops provide. In Java, there are three main types of loops. The easiest of which to understand is probably the while loop. Now, a while loop looks much like an if statement. So all we do is type the word while, and then parentheses, and inside the parentheses, we need some expression that will evaluate to either true or false, just like with an if statement. So we could say while true, and then curly braces. Now whatever is inside of these curly braces will run over and over and over as long as this condition remains true. Now if we were to run this right now, our program would never end, because while true is an infinite loop. So what would we need to do to set up our count 1 to 10 code in a while loop? Well we need some variable to essentially count the number of times we go through the loop. So let's, above the loop, type int counter equals zero. And now inside of our while loop we can say something like while counter is less than 10. And inside of our while loop we can say counter equals counter plus one. So now what happens is we get to this line, we initialize a variable called counter to zero. We then enter a while loop and while counter, which is 0 right now, is less than 10, we execute this code. The code will add 1 to counter. Now counter will be 1. 1 is less than 10, so it executes the code again. Then counter will be 2. 2 is less than 10. And so on and so on. Until counter is 10, and 10 is not less than 10, so this would evaluate to false, and the loop would exit. So let's copy one of our system outs and just get rid of all the rest. And now we'll put one of those system.outs inside of our while loop. I'll put it after we increment the counter. And now instead of printing out 10, we could just print out whatever the value of counter is. So now if we were to run that, we'll see that once again, 1 through 10 gets printed to the console. Now to show you how Java goes through this code, I'm going to introduce the debugger. But first, go to the line where you have int counter declared, and in this little margin to the left, I want you to right click and select toggle breakpoint. And you'll see this little dot appears on that line. Now I want you to go up to window, open perspective, debug. There also may be a button that says debug in Java, and you can switch between perspectives that way. Now we can go up to this little debug icon and click it, and our program will run up to the breakpoint we toggled on. So right now our program is running, but it's paused at this line of code. And what the debugger allows us to do is to execute code line by line and to really see what's happening and how Java is running the code. So to do that, go up to this arrow icon here and click that. This is called step into, and what it essentially does is it executes the next line of code. 
And now we'll see that our highlighted code went down from int counter equals zero to our while counter is less than 10. So now, if we click that button again or press F5, we'll enter the while loop. We'll run our counter equals counter plus one code, which will change the value of our counter to one. We'll then print out the value of counter. You'll see one is printed to the console. And then our code went back up to the while loop. And now we're going to evaluate the counter as less than 10 again. Go step into. And once again, counter gets incremented. Now counter is 2. And once again, we'll print out the counter. And you can just keep doing this. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And now on our last iteration, we'll print out counter. We'll go back up to while counter is less than 10. The current value of counter is 10. And if we click step into again, we'll see that it does not execute the loop body and our program finishes. So now to get back to our development perspective, we can go up to Window, Open Perspective Java, or just click the Java button on the upper right if you have it. So that is a while loop. Now there are two more kinds of loops I'm going to show you. So to keep everything separate, I'm going to create a method for our while loop and put all this code inside of it and then create different methods for each different kind of loop. So I'm going to go after the brace for main and type static void while loop parentheses opening curly brace. I'm going to cut all the code out of main and paste it into while loop. And now if you wanted to run that, you would simply call while loop from main. And just to show you it works, once again, 1 through 10 is printed to the console. So what if we were to set counter to 9 initially and then run it? We'll see that only 10 gets printed to the console. And what if the counter was already 10 and we run it then? We'll see that nothing even happens. There is no output to the console because this evaluated to false. Well, what if we wanted a loop that, no matter what, would always execute at least once. And that's the functionality that the next type of loop provides. It's called the do while loop. So for that, I'm going to create another method. Name it static void do while loop, parentheses, opening brace. And the way this looks is we type do, opening curly brace. And then after the closing curly brace, we put while, and then some condition that will evaluate to true or false. Now this works much like a while loop up here, except you evaluate the condition which tells you whether or not to do the loop again after it already runs. So even if the condition will evaluate false the first time through, it will still execute the code once. So if we wanted the same functionality, we could just copy the code up here, paste it in here, and we'll need to declare the variable, counter equals zero, and then fix our condition to counter is less than 10. And then inside of main, we'll call that loop, do while loop, and we'll comment out the other loop, and run the code. And we'll see that, once again, 1 through 10 is printed to the console. And this time, if we were to set counter to 10 and run it, we'll see that 11 gets printed to the console, because the code in the loop body ran the first time through, even though the condition is false because the condition is not tested until after the loop body runs once. You'll probably be thankful to hear that do while loops are actually pretty rare. I don't see them very often at all. However, the next kind of loop, called the for loop, is very common, and unfortunately it can be the most confusing to see the first time. So to set that one up, we'll create a new method. After our do while loop method, we'll type static void for loop, parentheses, braces. So here's how a for loop looks. We would type the word for and we could say something like int counter equals zero semicolon counter is less than 10 semicolon counter equals counter plus one and then braces. And now we could copy our print line and put it inside of the loop body. 
So you can see that there's three parts inside of the for loop here, separated by the semicolons. And to explain what they do, we'll put in a comment. We'll say for. Now in the first part of the for loop, we're essentially initializing some variable we're going to use as our counter. So we'll say initialize counter, semicolon. And the second part of the for loop is the condition that we check to see if we'll run the loop. So condition to see if we should run the loop, then semicolon. And the last part of the for loop is how we change our counter variable after each iteration of the loop. So we could say change counter variable. So in this first part, we're initializing a variable called counter to the value 0. In the second part, we're saying while counter is less than 10, we want to run this loop. And in the third part, we're saying after the loop runs, we want to add one to counter for the next iteration. And if we run this right now, we'll have to comment out our do while loop and call our for loop method and run it. We'll see that it prints out 0 through 9, not 1 through 10. So what's happening this time? Well, because in our previous loops, we added the value to counter prior to printing it out, we got the values 1 through 10. This time in the for loop, the value doesn't get added to the counter until the very end, because it's automatically done for us. So if we wanted to actually count 1 through 10, we would have to initialize our counter to 1, and then count, well, counter is less than 11, or you could say less than or equal to 10. Now if we run that again, we'll see that 1 through 10 is printed to the console. So hopefully that was a gentle introduction to loops, and if you don't quite get it, don't worry about it. Loops are definitely something you'll see a lot of going forward. Thanks for watching.